The basement areas in Texas Chainsaw can be some of the most confusing locations to learn and navigate. So today we're going to be taking a look at all basement layouts on each map in TCM. I'll also be providing basement map layouts that are labeled with room and key components such as locked doors leading out of the basement, ladders, and even victim spawn locations. The goal of this video is to get you familiar with some of the basement areas and to help you recognize some important locations. You can also download these maps on our community discord, link down below. Please note that the basement areas of these maps can be rather difficult to learn and it takes a little bit of time to really get comfortable with them. But nonetheless, this video should help to speed up that process. This video is also divided into timestamps for each map in case you're looking for one specifically. Lastly, before we dive in, I stream Texas Chainsaw over on Twitch regularly, so feel free to swing by and say hello. But let's get moving. The first map we have on the list for today is the Slaughterhouse. For this map, victims can spawn in a few places, and these are the West Cell, Cold Room, Bone Room, East Cell, and the Workshop. There are escapes located in the Furnace Room, Tool Storage, Bone Room, and North Storage Room. For this map, we're going to be starting things out on the East Cell. Also, you can keep track of where we are located by referring to the map in the top left, and we'll have our victim's location pinpointed up there. Heading left on our map out of the East Cell will spit you into the Furnace Room. You can access a ladder from the basement in this room if that's something you're looking for. But taking things back to the east cell, heading downwards on our map will bring you to the south well duct. Continuing straight will bring you into the south tunnel, and from here you can once again gain access to the furnace room if needed. But continuing straight down the south tunnel will bring you into the bone room. The bone room has some little divided sections, but here you can find another door to escape the basement, and you'll also find the fuse box tunnel escape right next to the bone room in the fuse box room. Heading upwards on a map from the bone and fuse box rooms, you'll find yourself in the Leatherface layer. This room connects to a few other important parts of the map, and we'll start by heading to the right where you'll find the central tunnel. The central tunnel is a short little area, but if you veer right, you'll end up in the workshop, which is just above our previously mentioned furnace room. Once you've got this down, you already tackled a good half of the map. Going back to the central tunnel, if you veer left, you'll find yourself in the cold room. Both the workshop and cold room connect to the tool storage room if you continue upwards. In the tool storage room, you can find another door to escape the basement, and if you continue heading upwards, you'll find yourself in the pump storage. This is a pretty small room that can connect you to the north corridor. Here you'll find yet another exit out of the basement. From the north corridor, there are two directions you can head. If you head straight, you'll find yourself in the northwest tunnel, which will spit you out to the west cell. If you head downwards from the north corridor, you'll find yourself in the west tunnel. This is located right above Leatherface's lair and is also interconnected with the northwest tunnel and west cell that we just covered. And that's about all there is for the slaughterhouse. Again, these map guides will make a lot more sense as you become more familiar with the game and even having a map pulled up while you play can really help you to learn each location and the possible routes to take. But let's jump over to our next map, the family house. The family house can be a bit of a confusing basement layout due to some of the crowded rooms and twists and turns. For this map, victims can spawn in the south cell, cold room, kennels, and the north cell. You can find exits from the basement located in the blood bathroom, basement storage, rear basement, side garden tunnel, and leatherface layer. We're going to start out by tackling the right side and going down each lane once we get some of the tunnels out of the way. Let's kick things off in the south cell. If you head to the right on our map out of the south cell, you'll find yourself in the west tunnel. From here, if you follow the tunnel downwards, you'll end up in the boiler room. Keep the boiler room in the back of your mind as we'll be returning to this location in just a few moments. Once here, we're going to head down once more to round out the bottom of the map, and this will lead you into the north tunnel. Now, the north tunnel has a few exits. Each of the exits are also connected to each other aside from the north tunnel, which helps to make things a bit less confusing. The first room connected to the tunnel is the basement bedroom. If you head left on our map, you'll notice that this leads into the kennels and then into the north cell, where the north tunnel spits you out. If you once again head to the left on our map from the north cell, you'll find yourself in the east tunnel. This tunnel is pretty much a straight shot over to the fuse box tunnel, which is also where our fuse box tunnel exit is located. But with that side of the map covered, let's head back to the previously mentioned boiler room that we kept in the back of our minds. If you head left on our map out of the boiler room on the bottom half of the wall, you'll find yourself in the layer corridor. 
This hallway sits right above the basement bedroom, kennels, and north cell. If you continue straight down the hall, you'll end up in the blood bathroom, and this is one of the locations you can escape the basement from as it has access to a ladder escape. If you head upwards on our map from the blood bathroom, you'll end up in the rear basement, which also houses one of the basement exits. It should be noted that the rear basement is connected to the east tunnel. Heading back to the boiler room once again, if you exit left on our map, but on the top side of the wall, you'll find yourself in Leatherface's lair. This room can seem a bit confusing due to how many connections it has to other locations, but as you get familiar with the various sections of the map, it becomes a lot more manageable. You can find an exit from the basement in Leatherface's lair if needed. If we head upwards towards the right side on our map, it'll take us to the cold room and cold room corridor, which are great locations for slipping away from family members, and you'll also notice that this is connected to our starting place, the South Cell. Heading back to Leatherface's lair, if we go up into the left, we'll find ourselves in the basement storage room, which is another rather large area. There's another basement exit located in this room. This room basically serves as another large connecting location to various rooms. On the left, it'll take us to the fuse box tunnel. Downwards, it'll take us back to Leatherface's lair or the rear basement. And on the right, it'll take us to the cold room or cold room corridor. Finally, if we head upwards on our map from the basement storage, it'll lead us to the side garden tunnel. This tunnel is super limiting, but it does have a ladder exit out of the basement, and it should be noted that it also connects back to the cold room corridor. But that about covers it for the family house. Our final map for today is the gas station. I think that this map is quite a bit more simple in terms of basement layout than the others, especially from a top-down perspective. Victims can spawn in two different areas of the north tunnel, the west cell, and the south tunnel. There are escapes from the basement located in the tool storage, shed basement, house basement, and south tunnel. We're going to kick things off in the west cell. Keep this location tucked in the back of your minds as we'll be referring back to it in just a moment. If you head upwards on the map from the west cell, you'll find yourself in the shed basement, which is where one of our basement escapes is located. There's also a small room called the small shed basement that connects the cell and shed basement. From the shed basement, if we head to the right on the map, we'll find ourselves in the south tunnel. Heading downwards will lead you to one of the basement exits in the car part storage. If we continue upwards on the map, the tunnel will eventually lead us to another basement exit connected to the thicket tunnel, and this one happens to be a ladder escape. Heading back to the west cell, if you move to the left on the map, you'll find yourself in the tool storage area, which has yet another ladder escape out of the basement in the tool shed. Know that if we were to move to the left on our map out of the tool storage area, we'd end up in the north tunnel, which houses the fuse box tunnel escape and also connects to the house basement and fuel storage, which we're about to cover. Heading upwards from the tool storage, you'll find yourself in the fuel storage area, and it should be noted that this is also connected to the shed basement. From here, you can either veer right or left on our map. If we head up into the right, we'll end up in Leatherface's lair, which then connects up to the east cell. Both the lair and the cell connect over to the south tunnel, which we covered earlier. Going back to our fuel storage, if we veer up into the left, we'll end up in the junk room. This connects to Leatherface's lair, but it also connects to our last important room, which is the house basement. The house basement contains another one of our exits from the basement, and it can take you to quite a few different areas on the map. From the house basement, moving left will connect you back to the north tunnel, and moving to the right would bring you over to the east cell. But that's the entire layout for the gas station basement. Those are all of the basement layouts we have for today, but I truly hope you enjoyed this guide. If you found today's video to be helpful, consider dropping a like or subscribing, but thank you so much for your time. We'll see you in the next one.